What is going on guys, it's Benjamin here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the GTA 5 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. Instead of this guide, we're going to be going through all the options possible to make sure that you guys get the best FPS possible whilst keeping the visuals looking as good as they can possibly be, and making sure that your game has no stutter and is running as smooth as possible. So if this guide does help you guys and you do get a good significant increase from this, please do hit the like button below and also subscribe for other content on other games depending on what you might play. And if you guys have any friends who are in need of a helping hand in getting better performance inside of GTA, it will be highly appreciate if you can share this video around with them. With all that being said and done, please do post your results after this guide in the description below. If you can tell me roughly what FPS you were at and what you're at now, that would be absolutely fantastic. And any feedback in general and any guides you guys want to request, please do leave in the comment section below as well. That being said, let's get right on into the guide. So first off, what I need you guys to go ahead and do is go into Steam, go into library, and what we're going to start off by doing is doing our in-game settings. Do this by pressing play and just going into the single player. This is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so once you guys are inside of this screen, what I want you to do is head into the settings tab found here at the bottom. Inside of here, I want you guys to navigate over to the graphics tab on the left hand side and you'll be given your graphics settings just like this. So we're going to click anywhere inside of here. Now what I want you guys to do, if, if you guys have 4GB or RAM or less, or have any stutters after this FPS guide, what I want you guys to do with your DirectX version is I want you to change that to 10.1. This will be the final step for any of you guys if you still have any issues after this guide, or have any issues with major stuttering, make sure to change this to DirectX 10.1. But for the instance of this tutorial and my personal computer, DirectX 11 works absolutely fine. So we're going to keep DirectX 11 turned on. Inside of here, I want you to set full screen type to full screen. Inside of here, under resolution, I recommend going for the highest you possibly can. If you do not have a great computer, maybe bump this down by one or two. But in general, I do recommend going to what your monitor's max resolution is. So for me, that's 1920 by 1080. Another thing you need to go ahead and look at is the video memory found here at the top. We roughly want to have around about three, four, five hundred megabytes free underneath this max number, which is found here. So for me, I kind of want to stay around 3500 or under. Okay, so as ratio that's completely fine leave this default refresh rate this varies depending on your monitor for you guys it's more likely going to be 60 if you have higher go higher output monitor is going to be set to one now fxaa if you guys do not like the jagged edges or anything make sure that you turn that on you shouldn't get a performance impact using this but for the instance of this tutorial on my personal preference i turn this off msaa make sure this is turned off vsync again if you guys have a 60 hertz refresh rate and you're experiencing any stuttering try turning on vsync but for me i have this turned off pause game on focus loss is turned on now for these three scaling options here, you guys can change these down to your personal preference. If you do not mind the population density, that's the amount of pedestrians and such that you will see with inside of the world. If you do not mind what that number is, I recommend turning that down to as low as you possibly want to. Same for population variety. If you guys want to go ahead and turn this down as well, this will also help out. And distance scaling, this is the most important option. Make sure that you turn this down to probably the last notch, if not off. Scrolling on down from there on my PC, I'm running a GTX 970, so I do have a lot of VRAM and it's it's a relatively decent graphics card. I'm running my texture quality on high. If you guys still have any stuttering issues, I recommend going for normal. So if you have a GTX 970 or worse, I recommend that you either go with normal, possibly high, but if you have less than that, go with normal. Instead of shaded quality, we're gonna be setting this to normal. Shadow quality, we're gonna be changing to normal. Reflection is normal. Reflection MSAA is off, and we'll scroll down even more. Water quality is going to be set to normal, particle quality normal. Grass, this is a very important one here. It makes sure that you set this to normal. It cannot be above normal, otherwise you will have a significant performance impact. Soft shadows are going to be set to sharp. Post effects is going to be set to normal. Antistropic filtering is going to be set six times, and tessellation is going to be set to off, along with ambient occlusion. Now, once you guys are inside of here and done with doing this, make sure that you hit the apply changes button. Now, sometimes it might ask you to. To restart your game if it does just press ok and wait for the game to restart and come back into this graphics settings options go into advanced graphics found here and make sure that every single one of these is turned all the way down and turned off we do not want to be using these extra options because they just suck fps and the visual increase that they give is literally next to non-existent so it really is entirely pointless going for this if you guys want to have an enjoyable smooth experience so make sure all of these are turned off once you're done with that again hit the apply button make sure all of this is applied and what we're going to be doing now is closing our game so hit the quit button Press yes. Okay, so once we've quit our game, we're going to be going into the left hand side. We're going to be searching for documents and we're going to go inside of our documents. If you don't know how to get there, go into this page just found here and go to documents on the left side. Inside of here, we're going to be going into Rockstar Games, GTA 5, and going into the settings.xml file. Inside of here, we're going to be double clicking and opening with Notepad. Once you're inside of here, you're going to be given something that looks very similar to this. There's going to be a hell of a lot of options in here, and a lot of you are probably not going to know what on earth you're. 
but don't worry I'm going to walk you through the options we need to change. So inside of here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting off by scrolling all the way down and we're going to be working from the bottom to the top. First option what we're going to be editing which is found here is DOF value. This is more than likely going to be set to true. Make sure that you just type in false. Now, once you've changed DOF value, we're going to be going up to post effects value. Make sure this is set to zero. Shader SSA value needs to be set to false. Again, if any of these are on true, make sure you turn them to false. Lighting fog volumes, for instance, this is still untrue for me. Go and type in false. TXAA enabled, false. FXAA enabled, false. Reflection MIP blur value. This is going to be set to true if you haven't come in here and turned this off before. So make sure that you set this again to false. Then what we're going to be doing is going through these excess shadow options. We're going to be removing the excess value and leaving them all at zero, just as I've done there. Distance, shadow distance value, we're going to be setting to zero. I'm going to be changing this number here to a five, so we're going to be halving the value of that. Shadows underscore long shadows are going to be set to false. Particle shadows, again, these are going to be set to true, so make sure that you set these to false. Ultra shadows enabled, false. Soft shadows enabled is going to be set to zero. Shared equality, zero grass quality zero water quality zero particle quality zero texture quality is going to be set to one sampling mode is going to be set to zero msaa quality zero msaa fragments zero msaa value is also zero and strobic filtering you guys can set this to eight if you would like if you guys are still getting low performance but i recommend sticking with 16 because the performance impact is next to non-existent for me then we'll be scrolling on up and changing the ssao value to zero this is more than likely going to be set to either one or three for you guys so make sure that you set that to zero reflection msa quality is going to be zero reflection quality zero shadow quality is going to be one if you want to turn off shadows completely from the game you can type zero there i recommend doing that if you have an extremely low end pc and you're having very low fps but i do recommend keeping shadows on vehicle lod bias is going to be set completely to zero and what you guys can do is you can experiment with these two options here the lod scale and the pedestrian lod bias but i recommend leaving these at default make sure that tessellation value is set to zero as well now once you guys are done inside of there changing all of those again if you are confused and you do not know what to change the things just pause the video i'll scroll down one more time within the config pause and just make sure that your settings match Now under the system part where it says graphics, leave all of this stuff stock for you. Do not change any of this no matter what because this is tied to normally what your GPU specifications are so do not change any of these here. But for instance, anything upside of here in the blue, you guys can pause it and change just to make sure the values are set. Once that's done, what I want you guys to do is head up here and just hit the save button and exit out of the notepad. Now, once you guys have exited out of the notepad, we're going to be going through a couple of Windows optimizations to make sure that you're getting the best FPS possible whilst in game. To do this, what we're gonna be doing is starting off by going into the services tab, by going into the bottom left and typing in services. Press enter and you'll be given a tab just like this. Scroll all the way down until the S's, they do go in alphabetical order. And what we're gonna be looking for is a service called Superfetch, which is found here. This service is more than likely going to be running for you guys if you've never gone in and manually disabled this. So what I want you guys to do is right click on it, go to properties, startup type, we're gonna be setting that to disabled. And the service is more than likely going to be running for you guys. So I want you to hit that big stop button right there. It might take a couple of seconds. And then once that's done, hit the apply and okay button. Also scroll around all the way if you guys are running Windows 10. I want you guys to do the exact same for all of the Xbox services besides the game monitoring one. So Xbox Live, all of these ones here, we're gonna be right clicking, going into properties, startup type disabled and stopping them and then press apply, okay. Do that for game save, auth manager and access management. Once you guys are done in there, all you've got to do is hit the exit button. We're going to be navigating into the bottom left again, and what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be deleting excess clutter from the system. To do this, we're going to be going into percent app data percent, and then press enter. Inside of here, we're going to be going into the app data folder, then going into load. Scroll all the way down to you see TEMP, go inside of there, and you're going to be given a ton of files and folders. Now, this is always interesting if you guys have followed any of my FPS guides in the past. I love knowing how much stuff is actually removed from your PCs inside of this folder because sometimes it's absolutely fascinating. And people can remove a couple of hundred megabytes, sometimes up to 10 plus gigabytes. It's absolutely insane. So if you guys haven't done a fresh Windows install in a long time, this is probably going to be huge. Start from the top to the bottom, drag all the way down and highlight everything inside of this folder and press the delete key. It's going to say that the action cannot be completed on some folders and files. That's fine. 
typically do this for all current items and hit skip. Hit skip. And once that's done, you're probably only going to be left with a couple of folders and files. Now inside of here, what it's basically done is it's removed all temporary files that Windows no longer uses that have been cached from years and years upon usage. This means that if you guys haven't reinstalled Windows in an extremely long time, these files haven't been used for months upon months. They're just sitting there and they've been used in the past and they're just sat there as excess clutter taking up space on your PC. So again, if you guys tell me how much you've removed from there, it's always fascinating to know in the comments below. Once you're done inside of there, I want you guys to exit out. And what we're going to be doing is going into the bottom left again. This time we're going to be typing in run, pressing enter. Now inside of this box given here, we're going to be typing in prefetch, press OK. And once you're inside of there, you're also going to be given a bunch of folders and files more than likely. For me, I only have one file, but because the service that we disabled earlier on, which is superfetch, this is where all of those files and folders go. Now, because I have that disabled, this no longer fills up with files and folders. So yours is more than likely going to be jam packed with stuff in here as well. If it isn't, don't worry. I want you to highlight everything just like you did in the temp folder from the top to the bottom and press the delete key. Inside of there, it might ask you again that things can't be deleted. Just hit the skip option if it does. If not, that's completely fine. Exit out of there. What we're going to do is go over to our recycling bin and empty the recycling bin and press yes. Another thing for you NVIDIA users, I want you guys to go to the desktop and right click on the desktop. Inside of there, I want you guys to go into NVIDIA control panel. Now, once you guys are inside of the NVIDIA control panel, I want you guys to go over to the adjust image settings with preview tab. Inside of here, you need to select the use 3D advanced image settings, then press the apply button, which will appear down here. After that, what you need to do is go to manage 3D settings found here on the left hand side. Now, once you're inside of here, what I want you guys to go ahead and do is copy all of my settings that you see here. We're going to start by scrolling down all the way to the bottom. We're going to be going through the most important ones. First off, we want to go to power management mode. This is the most important one to ensure that your graphics card is running at the optimal performance it possibly can. Inside of here, going to the drop down menu, it's more than likely going to be set to optimal power or adaptive, set to prefer maximum performance. Now for the rest of these, virtual reality pre-rendered frames going to be set to 1, and the rest of these you need to make sure that yours are copied. So pause the video, check your own settings. If they're not set to what these are, make sure that you set them. Again, I'll scroll all the way to the top so you can pause here again, just to make sure that you have all of the settings copied and everything is the same. Once you guys have done that, hit the apply button found here in the bottom right, and then you can exit out of NVIDIA control panel. Another thing I want you guys to do is go into the bottom left, type power. Instead of here, go into Edit Power Plan or any of the power options and go to the Power Options tab found here at the top. Press the drop down arrow which is going to be shown here where it says show additional plans and select high performance. Inside of here I want you guys to go ahead and hit change plan settings. You can set these to anything you want to do. These are all personal preference but what we're interested in is going into the change advanced power set. Press the tab. Inside of here I want you guys to go into the hard disk option. Go into it even further and it will say turn off hard disk after and this will more than likely be set to a certain amount of time. What I want you guys to go ahead and do is type zero and hit apply. Then what I want you guys to do is scroll down all the way to the bottom and see processor power management. Inside of here again, go into these options found here and make sure that your process of power management is set to the exact same that mine is. Again, just pause the video and set your settings to the same. So minimum processor state should be 100% and maximum processor state should be 100%. Then press apply and OK. After that's all done, hit save changes and you can exit out of the power plan. Now, if you guys navigate down to the description below, you're going to notice that there are links below. One is for CCleaner, Timer Resolution and Razor Cortex. What we want you guys to go ahead and do is download the latest version of CCleaner and install it to your PC. This is a incredibly useful tool tool to make sure that your PC is running as best as it possibly can and as efficiently as possible. Inside of CCleaner, what we're going to be doing is going in and booting it. It might ask you for an update. I personally never do them once I've got it installed. And we're interested in using the cleaner utility, which is found here. Hit the analyze button. Again, this can probably take longer than it's going to take me if you guys are using a hard drive because I'm using an SSD. Or if you haven't used this program before, again, it's more than likely going to take longer than it is for me. But what we want to do is make sure that the program has time to run. So just let the program run. It will usually take a couple of minutes. Now, once the program is done, it's going to tell you how many megabytes or gigabytes that are going to be removed. And we're just going to hit the run cleaner button here. Press OK. It's more than likely going to ask you to close things. So just hit yes to that. And it's going to say cleaning complete. We're going to run the analysis one more time. And we're going to keep running analysis and run cleaner until we're giving analysis complete zero bytes to be removed. Now, once we're done inside of there, we're going to be going into the registry file, which is found here. Hit scan for issues. You're more than likely going to see pages upon pages appear here because I did this even just a couple of days ago and it's found God knows how many. And we're just going to hit the fix selected issues. Do you want to back up the changes to the registry? No. Fix all selected issues. Press close. Scan again. As you can see, it's still finding some for me. Hit fix selected issues. Fixed issue. 
again. Scan, and I want you guys to keep doing it until you're given this page here, which says no issues were found. Once that's done, what I recommend you guys do is use CCleaner again, probably once on the first of every month or the last day of every month, just to make sure that your PC is running the most efficiently it possibly can. Now inside of the description again, I've also linked the latest GPU drivers for both Nvidia and Radeon cards slash AMD cards. Now what I want you guys to do if you have an Nvidia card is go to the automatic driver updates utility found here and hit the download button and follow the on-screen prompt and download the program and install it and it'll do everything for you. If you guys are using AMD, go to the left side here, automatically detect and install your driver, hit download now, follow the app and it will also do everything for you. Make sure that this app is running in the background and it will notify you when new driver updates are out for your PC. PCs, regardless of the hardware that you're using to make sure that your PC is running in top-notch condition all the time. It shocks me how many people do not update their drivers after their PC is built and they just expect their system to run absolutely fine forever. So make sure, again, if you guys have not done this manually, please do go in and have a look and see if there are any updates available because I'm almost certain this will probably fix any issues that you're having. Okay, so that's pretty much it in terms of what we're actually going to be doing to make the FPS better with inside of the game. I also want you guys to go into the description below and and download the timeresolution.exe and also if you guys can i do recommend it sign up and download razor cortex and open the program on your pc i'm going to do that now for myself so what i'm going to do is go ahead and open that up it's going to open up just like this this part is again completely up to you guys you do not have to have razor cortex installed for this boost to work again it just increases your frame rate that little bit more which i personally like i'm going to be hitting the boost button inside of here it's going to be releasing any excess ram that doesn't need to be used by other programs and making sure that the game can have the most performance possible. We're going to be minimizing that. And now for another important part, we're going to be opening the time resolution, but we're going to be running that as an administrator. Inside of here, it's going to look like a very weird looking program. What you guys got to do is hit the maximum button here found in the bottom left. This basically means that Windows code can run as fast as it possibly wants to, and it's not being limited by the operating system, and it will not have a hindrance on your performance or cause any input lag inside of games. Sounds somewhat complex. All you got to do is hit the maximum button and hit minimize and just leave it running whilst you play. Now what you guys got to do is go into the bottom left open up steam again hit play on side of gta now all there is left to do guys is to boot gta go on there and also if you guys can leave in the description below how much of an fps crease you have had if you have any questions about the tutorial or would just like to leave some general feedback on the videos or request another fps guide for a game please do let me know in the comment section below please do post your results if you guys can get them for me because it's absolutely fantastic to hear how much of an increase you guys have had and any queries that you have if this video has helped you guys please do leave a like below it helps out a ton. Also feel free to share it around with any friends that might be experiencing low FPS and need better performance on side their PCs as well. And please do also subscribe to the channel because I have FPS guides coming out for new games. I have FPS guides for older games just to make sure that everyone has the best performance possible no matter whether they're running on a high end, low end or a medium end PC. It's best that we're all on a level playing field and have a smooth enjoyable experience across the board on PC games regardless of your budget. So I've been Panjano guys, thank you very much for watching, have a great week, weekend, whatever it is for you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.